Sorry, my oh. mic was good. Sorry. Started now. So um. So thank you for joining us. I mean, joining Lab's um, workshop, and I want to I. Rav, um, would you please introduce yourself because some of us are quite new to you. Okay, um, I'm Rab Patterson. Uh, Jao, I'm a member of the Technical Advisory and Support Committee. Um, I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator, Google Certified Innovator and Trainer, um, all around kind of ed tech geek. And back in 2010, I went to the University of Washington to do the Zotero Trainers course back in 2010. And this was a course run by the app developers to teach some people to go back to their own universities to then teach some others how to use Zotero. So I've been in Zotero user advocate officially since then, although privately I had used it for my own purposes even before then, back in the day. Um, it does have a whole load of advantages over some of the rival products, not least of all being that it's open source and free, um, platform neutral, browser neutral as well. So that's my background and my connection to Zotero. And I'm also one of the officers of Okinawa Jout as well. So I volunteered to do this today as part of today's event. So that's who I am. That's who you're listening to, et cetera, et cetera. Good enough for that? Yes, more than okay. good. <laughs> Excellent. So um, I'm going to, this is being recorded today as well. And later I'll upload it onto my YouTube channel. And also on my YouTube channel, besides my pretty face at the top, if you scroll down and scroll down, um, there is an academic writing subsection and I've got seven or eight really short YouTube videos that I made a few years ago for my students on how to use various aspects of Zotero. They're there now. They're a little bit dated because the way that some of the things work in Zotero has changed a little bit. And hopefully today's video will get us back on track with my YouTube channel having the most up-to-date usages. So this is going to be a workshop rather than a presentation. I think the most useful thing that people can do is to have Zotero installed on their own machine and follow along with me as I actually give the session today. So uh, maybe just with a show of hands, can everybody use the show hands button if you've already got Zotero installed on your machine? Only one. Okay, so most people don't have it. Well, if you navigate to the URL, www.zotero.org, let me just quickly put that in the chat. You should get to this main Zotero page here. And you want to do a couple of things first. The very, I'm already logged in. You can see I've got, I'm logged into my account. You'll see on a, let me just open up an incognito window. If we go to one that's not logged in, you'll see a login icon. Now, even if you haven't made accounts, still click on login first, and that will take you here. And then you can click on this one to register for a free account and go ahead and register an account with Zotero. Now, you don't need the account to use the app, but if you're using the app on multiple devices, you'll need the cloud-based account to sync your data into the cloud to keep multiple devices in sync with the Zotero on all these advices, devices. So I'm already logged in here. If you can go ahead and create a Zotero account as well. The next stage is to click the download button. You can't miss it, big red button right in the middle of the screen. And when you click this, Zotero recognizes whether you're on a Mac or a Windows machine, and it will give you the Zotero for Mac, Zotero for Windows. And it will also recognize which browser you're using. Ah, Madoka, I just saw your message there, but I'm already recording. I just saw the chat there. Um, and it will ask you, do you want to install a connector for your browser and yes you do you absolutely need that 
Because I'm using Chrome, it's offering me the Chrome connector. If I click this, it will take me to the Google Chrome web store. And mine's is already installed, but yours will say a button called install on Chrome. If you're using Safari, it will take you to the Safari extensions page and it will download the little thing that you'll need to open. And it also works on Firefox as well. It doesn't work on Internet Explorer or any of the Microsoft ones. But if you're using Google Chrome, it should take you, Chrome is the one I recommend. It'll take you right to the Chrome Web Store and just install the connector. Now, when it comes time to download the app, If you're on a Mac, you'll get the DMG file. Once that's downloaded, just open it and install it in your applications. If you're using older computers, um, there are earlier versions of this, but most people I think are now using 64-bit Macs, I would guess. This one should probably work. Um, Windows, Linux, those kind of things are in here. If you do need one of the older ones because you're running a really old Mac, you could probably click the 4.0 and get the standalone one. If you are using 4.0, don't use the Firefox one, get the standalone. So that should have you downloading the app. And if you download the app, it looks something like this. Now, these are all many, 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 many folders that I've made and used over the years. And I made one specially for today, Okie Gel Workshop, which has nothing in it. And if you've installed the connector properly on your Google Chrome, where you see all the little add-ons and extras, this one here, which looks like a little web page, this is your Zotero connector here. And it will automatically open up various bits and bobs. So is everybody with me so far? Anybody got any issues? Um, this is another thing. If anyone has any problems, feel free to interrupt and ask a question as we go along. Because if you don't, if you wait till the end, you're probably going to be stuck all the way through the session. So do feel free to either verbally or in the chat. If you've got any questions or issues, just ask them as they come up. So you've hopefully got, you're logged in to your Zotero. And you'll see this. You'll know you're logged in because it has your name here. Now, that's the home page. The key thing to look at is the web library. And the web library is an online copy of everything which is on your desktop app. And anytime you add something in here, it'll automatically go into that online app. It will sync up automatically. And I can show you how to do that later manually if, if you have an issue with that. But first we need to get some things in. Now, why would we want to have all these things online? Well, let's say I went to Okinawa to visit George or Hokkaido to visit Dawn or Shizuoka to visit Adam or someone, and I have to do something, reference a paper, and I don't have my own machine with me, I can go into any other computer, download this app, and there's, you can probably see here, there's a little sync button. And this will sync everything that I have on the online account with the app that I've just installed on the machine that isn't mine. If I go to my office at university and there's a computer there, and I've been adding things on my home computer here, they're automatically synced to my cloud account here. Then when I go to my office computer and open up the Zotero there, and I click the sync button, it will automatically download. So it's a way of keeping your Zotero on multiple devices permanently in sync. So how do we get some stuff in here? Well, here's the Okinawa Jout folder. And the only thing I've added is the Zotero web page, but that's not so useful. Imagine I was writing a research paper. 
what kind of sources do we need for research paper? Well, we need books. So where do we go to find books? Besides the library, of course. So we could go to Amazon and I put an, an author that I read, William Bloom, and all of his books have came up here on the list. And the little icon, which Zotero has, has changed to a yellow folder icon. Now, if I click this folder icon, this will show me all the books that are on this page in this window, and I can choose the ones I want. You know, for example, Ghost Hunters, CIA, Forgotten History, Stalag 17, for example. I've just chosen three at random, and I click OK. This window opens asking me, am I sure I want to have this in the OKGEL workshop rather than anything else? And I'm sure. So I can just click Done. And now, Ghost Hunters, CIA, Stalag 17, these are now all in my Zotero. As the type, book, title, author, edition, place, publisher, date, all the information I would need to create and format a reference for this book has automatically been added in here. Similar with this one. So this using the folder is very, very useful if you already know the books that you want. Now, if we don't, then I could actually click on one of the books, which I've already done here, and I'm right into the actual book. And most books on Amazon these days have a look inside function. And, you know, I can usually see the title page, table of contents, whatever. And you can usually read some of the pages on Amazon. And that helps me decide if this is the book that I want. Now, this one here, I'm looking at a list of books. So the Zotero icon is a folder, a yellow folder. This one, because I'm looking at one specific book, the Zotero icon has changed to a book icon. And again, if I click the book icon, it asks me, am I sure I want to add this to Okijao? I am. Done. And then this book is added as well. And Zotero is very, very good at grabbing all the data from Amazon. But there's one thing that sometimes glitches. The place is sometimes missing. So when you're adding things from Amazon, the one thing to always check is, has it added the place? If it has, great. If it hasn't, it's just a matter of going inside, finding it on the look inside on the Amazon, and then you could go back to your main thing, click on the book, click on the place, and you could manually type it in. All of these boxes are manually editable. And if that was ever missing, you can just check in the book and manually add it. And there we go. Now, what if Amazon doesn't have the book? Unlikely, but sometimes it happens. Zotero also works natively with Google Books. So again, if we go to Google Books, so I've done a search here for Chomsky. And similarly, oh, must have been a new Google Chrome update. And um, usually Google Books also brings up the little yellow folder, but you can see here, it doesn't have the yellow folder. It has a web page icon. So that web page icon is not so useful. That's just telling us the folder thing isn't working. Not to worry, we we'll open up the book. And when we go in to the actual book, it changes to a book icon. And now I can look through the book here. I can see all the information on the book. That's the one I want to read. OK, I can click the book icon and add it. Done. And here's one I already opened. And again, if you open it, 
you can see table of contents and some information on the book. And if you're in Google Books reading the book, if you look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see this elevator bar is some parts blue, some parts white. The blue parts are the parts you can read. The white parts are the parts you can't. So this book here, quite an old book, there's quite a lot of the book available for reading online in Google Books. Newer books, it's probably going to be a lot less because they're hopeful that people would buy it. So that's basically how Google Books also works with Sotero. Now, Google Books itself, if we find the book here in Google Books, there's a button called Add to My Library. So you can click this, which adds the book to your Google Library. And on your Google Library, you can have bookshelves made with different names, and you can choose which shelf you want to put it in. To, to read, reading now, have read, educational technology, learning technology. So it doesn't really have what I want. So I'll just stick it in favorites for the moment, done. And then I can go in and click new shelf and I could call it US politics, for example. I've now created a US politics shelf and I can move the book in there. So the next time when I find another book here, add to my library, this time, you can see there's a US politics option available to me and I can add it in there. Now you don't need to do that step when you're using Zotero, but if you do find the book on Google Books and you can read quite a lot of it, it's a fairly useful place to stick the book. So um, what I'd like you guys to do is just take a couple of minutes, search for some books on Amazon, search for some books on Google Books, add them into Zotero. Now the one thing I'll need to tell you before you do this is when you've got your Zotero app open, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see another little yellow folder icon. And here, you can just call it whatever you like, click, and it will automatically add a new folder for you. Now, it puts them in uh, alphabetical order, and test is quite far down. If I wanted that at the top, for example, if I put a little asterisk in front of it, oops, didn't want to do that. Um, if I open this up and put an asterisk in front of it, it moves it back up to the top because it puts asterisks before letters. So if you want to rearrange them non-alphabetically, you can do those little hacks. So if everybody can take a couple of minutes, add some books from Amazon and Google into Zotero, and we'll see if there's any issues there. Now, Looking at Dawn's question, the difference of a bookshelf, a folder, and a collection. Are you talking about the difference in Zotero, Dawn? Or were you meaning a bookshelf in Google Books? I heard I heard you say the word bookshelf, and I've uh, heard you use the word folder. I'm talking in Zotero. Okay. Um, Zotero doesn't have bookshelves. Bookshelves was just purely in relation to Google Books. So oh, if you're Google searching, Google Books is bookshelves, bookshelves yeah. the word they use. Got yeah. it. Whereas a folder is related to all of these individual folders that you can create using this new folder button inside Zotero. And, and a folder is a collection. Essentially, yeah. And is that what you share to make uh, a collaborative team? You, yes, it would be a folder like this, but they would be shared down at the bottom under something called group libraries, which I'm going to get to later. Got it. Um, so to make the group, you actually have to go back into the online one, and I'll cover this later. We would select groups, and then you would create a new group, and you would invite people. That's done via the online account. And then once you've made these new folders for the groups, they'll appear at the bottom of your list of other folders under group libraries down here. Great. So for the moment then, if everybody can just play around with Amazon and Google Books and add some books in here, the other thing to be aware of is when you find a book, so for example, this one here, it's the Kindle edition. So when I open this up, 
make sure you're not on the Kindle edition when you're adding the book because some of the data will be a little bit messed up because obviously it's not actually published in the same way as a paper book. So make sure you're choosing the paperback version first oh, before you actually click the button. So you can see here, the page is now loaded and that's changed to a book and we're on paperback. That will put in all the data that we actually want. Whereas the Kindle one can sometimes cause you some issues with the data. It's much better to be adding the paperback one because then you can match up the page numbers as well because on Kindle, the page numbers are a little bit out of sync too. Okay, so while well, you guys are doing that, anyone got any problems with anything? Everybody um, okay? I was I was wondering, Rob, whether, uh, like I have a, already a fairly large um, folder full of PDFs uh, rather than, Going with books, or is that something you're going to get? Yeah, through? I'm going to cover that a little bit later. It can handle all ah. the formats. But the main thing is just starting with books. That's what most people are going to use. Then we're going to move on to newspaper stories, then articles, PDFs, whatever. And I'll go through all the different types of things that we can put in. Wow. I feel like this is a a great place for a person who has a hobby of collecting things or yes. collecting ideas. Um, a slightly off topic, and I wasn't planning on doing it in today's session, but you've just given me an idea. So on the top of your Zotero toolbar, you can see there's a red plus button here, yeah? And if we click this, you can manually add things. So for example, let's say, I wanted to make a reference to Andy's presentation today. So I could click presentation and I could put in, you know, whatever the title was of Andy's presentation and presenter, you know, that was Curtis, Andy, blah, 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 blah. I can go through putting in dates, times, places, and you can manually create something. And because it's a presentation, you can see it's got a little screen icon here as opposed to a book icon. Now, you said collecting things. Automatically, it brings up book, book section, document, wherever. But if you choose more, you can even add artwork. Wow. Paintings, photos, wherever. Now, there's a caveat to this. The Zotero app on your desktop computer, the space is limited according to the space of your hard drive of your computer. So for most people in the modern world, that's almost huge, unlimited. So you could add in, so let's say artwork, you could add in a digital scan of the oh, Mina, not Mina, Mona Lisa, uh, Da Vinci, you know, whatever. Um, medium uh, would be canvas. I think it's oil on canvas and artwork size. Obviously, I don't know the size of the Mona Lisa, but I could Google it. And, you know, maybe it's something like 65 cent centimeters by whatever, I don't know, like 108 centimeters or whatever. You can right. add all that data and you can go through and do this. Now, here you can actually drag PDFs and drag JPEGs on top of the entry. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And they'll appear underneath. And that's fine on your desktop because you've got tons of space. But when this then syncs to your online one, your online one space is limited. Um, I think off the top of my head, it's two gigabytes, although you can buy more for them using the upgrade storage button. So... You don't want to sync all of those large digital photo scans, JPEGs, wherever, onto your online collection if you can help it, because that will eat up your space. So what you can then do is go into your Zotero, go to preferences, and when we go to, where are we, sync, if you uncheck this box, it will only sync the data. It won't sync the attachments, PDFs, JPEGs, PNG files, or whatever, to save your space. 
So you've got that option there as well. So that's a really good point about people wanting to organize any of their collections because the things that you can add into Zotero and put all the data in is a lot. Um, even here, I started putting my conference lists and journal articles and so on into Zotero as well, so that it would be easy for me to format those lists if I needed to do it for something. George, you got a question? Oh, I just saw your hand had came up. Um, Ma has asked, does it get access to all book article websites? Well, this is my next point. Presumably everybody now is finished with Amazon and Google Books. Is everybody all done with that? We all good? Yep, okay. So next thing that you might want to do besides books is... Newspaper articles. Now, I actually don't have a subscription for the New York Times. I don't want to give them any money, but... I will, so therefore, I won't be able to read this article here. So when I click the article and I open it up, the Zotero button, when the page finishes loading, it changes to a little newspaper icon. So when I click the newspaper icon, obviously I don't want it in presentations. I want to scroll back up and put it in my OKGEL workshop. Done. So now... There it's there. Newspaper article, title, author, abstract, publication, date, etc., etc., etc. All of that information is there, even though I can't actually read the article because I don't have a subscription. I do have the reference data for the article there. So it works with new big famous newspapers. It will automatically recognize them via the newspaper icon here. Now. Let me choose a not big, not famous, not high quality newspaper. And that doesn't mean to imply I like the New York Times because I don't, but this is a particularly low quality Scottish tabloid. And let me just find a story. So I'm on this story about someone drowning in Scotland, sad. And when the page finishes loading, because this is not a huge, big, world famous newspaper or whatever, it's probably not going to change to the newspaper icon here. It's going to keep the web page icon, which is not so useful. So I can still add it when the page finishes loading, but for some reason, this paper is, there we go. It's going to let me load now. And when I go back to my Zotero, it's added it, but it's added it as a web page rather than a newspaper article. Now that's no problem. I can just go in here and change it to newspaper article, but it means I'll need to double check everything because here, the journalist is Ryan Carroll, but because it thought it was a web page, it hasn't added the journalist details. So I'd have to do that manually. Because it didn't pull that in. So when you are adding things using the web page button, that's the one thing that you kind of need to check most often, because when you are changing it to newspaper, there's a few things that you'll need to check. Now, this one is actually okay. If we look at the title here, it's written in title font, first word, proper nouns and capitals, the rest are written in lowercase, which I think is like an MLA style or whatever. Um, that's okay to have that in, but quite a lot of the time, if you're dealing with tabloid newspapers, they'll have the title in all caps. To scream out the headline, which of course we don't want in academic writing. So sometimes you might find that your title is written in all caps if you're importing from newspapers. Now that's not Zotero's fault. Zotero can only import what the newspaper website gives you. So you do need to check that these are not written in all caps. And then we're kind of good to go with that. Now, how about Japanese newspapers? So let's say I find a story. I'll keep it in Japanese. I won't use Google Translate. So I've got the Japanese here, the page is loading. 
It might when the page finishes. Ah, it hasn't. So this is going to give us a double problem. A, it doesn't recognize this as a newspaper. It's thinking it as a web page, but we can still add it. And we're going to have two issues here. Issue number one is we are going to have to change this to newspaper article. And number two, obviously we're going to have to check who the author is, etc. But all the entries are in Japanese. And if you're going to be referencing this in an English language paper, we actually need Romaji Japanese brackets, English translation. So you'd need to manually rewrite the Japanese title in Romaji and then put the English translation here. And you wouldn't need to worry with the abstract because you could leave it as is. The abstract's not going to appear in your reference, but the publication would. The author's name, again, we'd need to have all of that in Romaji because we don't want the hiragana, katakana, kanji, hangul, Arabic script, wherever coming up in our bibliography for an English language paper. So as long as you change all of those to Romaji, you'll be good. So. Uh, why don't I give you two minutes to play around with newspapers and we'll see if there's any problems people have and then we'll move on to journal articles next. So playing around, adding things from newspapers, anybody got any problems? Everybody all good with those? Yeah, and if you've got, uh, thumb up. If you've got any questions, either just verbally ask or raise the hand symbol or type in the chat if you do have any problems. No? Okay. Let's move on to where Zotero really, really shines. Online databases of journals, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I've started with JSTOR just because they make all their stuff public. So if I go into JSTOR and I search for something, and let's put politics in, okay, why not? Oh, 4 million results, okay, not really a surprise. Now, some of these are book chapters. Some of these will be PDFs. Some of these are journal articles. So I wanted to find a journal article rather than books because we've already dealt with books in Amazon. But here's a journal article, Rage, Resistance and Politics Against the Oppression. So let's open up. And it will take us to whatever journal it is it's from. Here we go. Uh, Symposium, Ian Shapiro's Politics Against Domination. Here's the abstract. Here's all the data, pages published by Penn State, U, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a journal article. So the Zotero button in your toolbar has changed to a little paper icon. And if I click that, again, add it to Okijout, I'm done. There it's there. Journal article, rage resistance, politics against oppression, author, abstract, publication, volume, issue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely everything you could want is there. And Zotero works natively with more online databases than any other app, RefWorks, EndNotes, wherever. Zotero connects to more of them than any of the others via the one-click button. Now, some of the other ones, RefNotes, EndNote, RefWorks, EndNotes, those kind of things, they will connect to the databases, but sometimes you have to manually copy and paste the info in, whereas Zotero, has got a larger number of journals, et cetera, that you can do a one-click add-in. Now, I was playing around with Google Scholar earlier on to find some things as well. So I went into Google Scholar because it works with Google Scholar too. And here's one here, 9-11, a new Pearl Harbor, analogies, narratives, meaning 9-11, civil society, blah, 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 blah. I chose it because it was a PDF. Sage Journal, Cultural Sociology, blah, blah, blah. When it finishes loading, I'm still waiting on the page loading. 
But when it finishes loading, you can see it brings up the little paper icon here. Again, click it. I want to make sure that it's going into my OKJAL workshop. Done. There it's there. Pearl Harbor, blah, 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 blah. Got all the details here. Now, this time, it hasn't grabbed the PDF because, you know, the PDF isn't here. But if we go back and let's see if I can find another one. Let's try this one. It's going to load. Now, this one here is natively opening the PDF in the browser. It's taking us not to the journal's homepage, it's taking us directly to the PDF. Now, if you look at Zotero up here, it's now showing a um, Adobe Acrobat PDF symbol rather than a book or a paper or whatever. So when we click this, it's an article PDF and we add it, <laughs> it's imported the PDF link in here, and it's created from the metadata, journal article, title, okay. author, whatever, 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 whatever. Now, it doesn't always do that. If you're doing this with Safari or Firefox, quite a lot of the time, it won't do that. You'll just get this, and you won't get that above, depending on the place where you're importing it for and the browser you use. Chrome works the best of all, better than Safari, better than Firefox, and Google Scholar works the best for getting PDFs that will also bring in all the metadata above. Now, um, Don's asked, why does Zotero have more databases than EndNote? Um, it's not that it has more databases because the databases are not made by Zotero or EndNote or, or, or wherever. And every one of these apps can connect to every database, but whatever the creators behind Zotero have done, they've got more, I don't even know if app is the right word or coding or, or wherever, to automatically support the one-click import. Maybe because it's open source, maybe they've got much more programmers working on it, for example, rather than EndNote or RefWorks, that, who would only be doing in-house. In yeah, that's my question. That's what I think is the correct reason. Because it's open source, they've gotten so many people to contribute these integrations. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's great because I, I'm, I was really burned by EndNote in their incredible you know, charges that they do. So but I'm so excited that Zotero does this. On that Zotero. note, do you know EndNote actually tried to sue Zotero? I, I, I can imagine it. So what there's, happened there's is probably, this is There's probably you. dozens of, of investors and, and you know, I, so <laughs> That, lawyers, that wasn't lawyers, why you tried to sue them, lawyers though. on this. So th this is going to be useful for you and possibly for George for his question earlier. But if we go back into the main Zotero page and um, we look on here, under documentation, there's a whole load of guides for how to do absolutely everything in Zotero. And they're available in many, many, many different languages, all done for free by their supporters, contributors, open source, wherever, wherever. Wonderful. And there's discussion forums there as well. Now, one of the things that they made because people were asking for it was an exportation tool to get your full collection out of EndNote, out of RefWorks and into Zotero. And that's why EndNote tried to sue them for making an exportation tool to <laughs> help you get your own data out of an app you don't like into one you do. They tried to sue them for that, and thankfully they lost. Amen. They lost. So um, hopefully that kind of gives you the guide of how to get 
you know, from the databases in. Of course, if your university subscribes to all these different databases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then you've probably got access to the databases. And if you've got access to the databases to bring them up on screen, and you've got the Zotero connector added, it's a kind of smooth process to bring them in. Oh, that's another question. So, so what you showed us just now with a, with a database is because you've paid for that uh, database or your no. school has? Uh, no, I, I chose JSTOR because JSTOR is free to everybody. So I let me try it. one that I don't have access to. So LexisNexis, for example, it's a, a database of newspaper, news media articles. My university doesn't subscribe to it. Individual subscriptions run into thousands of dollars per year. I've got no access to this whatsoever. So Zotero would work with it if I could get into the database. But I actually can't because my university doesn't give me access to it and I don't have thousands of dollars to pay. So at present, for me, Zotero isn't going to work with LexisNexis because I can't work with LexisNexis. But if my university did grant me access to it, then Zotero would work with it. Got it. Via that button. But you're kind of limited with which ones your university pays for, for you to have, essentially. Got it. Thank Last you. thing I wanted to cover with sources, this is the modern multimedia age. Video is a good source. And most people probably know IMDb. So I went into IMDb, Internet Movie Database. They've got database information on almost every movie made, Western ones at least. And I found this, The Corporation. It's a documentary on politics, economics, business, etc. Very, very good. And because it's a movie, Zotero's put in a little file icon here. So again, I can click that, add it, go back in here, and it's a film. Here's the title, here's the directors, here's the script writers, running time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's got everything that we would need. So we've got all of these sources in our Zotero. So let's say we are reading this book, blah, 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 blah and you come across something, oh, that's really useful. I need to keep a note of that. So you look, we're on page 31, maybe it was here. So you would go into Zotero, and that book was Rogue State. Click Notes, add a note. And then you could type in whatever quote it was you wanted, type in the page number, and you've now made a little child note to the parent entry. Go back in here, read a bit more, read a bit more, blah, 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 blah. Now, you've got two ways of doing this. You could go back to the original note and just put in, you know, a second note in there, or go back to the parent entry and make a completely new note, Put them in like that. It's up to you which which is best for your workflow. So you can put all these notes in here, even for the movie. Now add a note. You know, maybe somebody said blah 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 blah. Now it's not going to have a page number because it's a movie. But if it was a DVD, you know, maybe it's in chapter three, you know, minute seven, for example. You could put in, you know, wherever the reference came from. So you can use this as a note-taking tool as well. Now, it's never going to be as full-featured a note-taking app as like Evernote or something like that. That's not its purpose. But it will accurately take the notes that you need when you come to do your references like this. So let's say we are writing a paper. Blah, 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 blah. And in here, I need to put in my quote. Oh, yeah, what was that quote again? back to your Zotero, find it, there's your quote. And we can put that quote in there. Now we need the reference for it. Oh, George, you got a question? You're muted. Yeah, yeah, this this looks really exciting. I'm just curious, I'm wondering like, uh, you know, like for example, with a Kindle book, 
You That's can. why I was telling people don't don't use the Kindle one because the page numbers on Kindle don't match up to the paperback one. Won't match up. Yeah. Now, if you've only got the Kindle one, you, you've got no choice. That's going to be what you're going to have to use. Now, <clears> Kindle. If you've ever read books on, I, I don't have the Kindle reader. I have the Kindle app on my iPad, and the numbers that it gives me at the bottom, they they're weird numbers. They don't match the pages, so really you need to exactly. figure out some way of doing this now. When we've put in the quote, we obviously need an in-text citation in here, yeah? So the other thing that I haven't shown you yet, if we go back to the home Zotero, and we've downloaded the app in the connector, we want to go to plugins. And if you scroll a little bit down, there's tons of plugins for almost everything you could ever want. The folder import, like if you've got a ton of PDFs on your desktop and you want to import them, there's a plugin for that. If you're using DOI numbers, there's a plugin for that. Google Scholar citations, there's plugins. There's plugins for almost everything you could ever imagine. And if we scroll down, Drupal there, for Adam. Um, if we scroll down for word processor plugins, it works with Microsoft Word and the free, you know, the cloned LibreOffice, whatever, and it works with Google Docs. It won't work with Apple's pages. Apple don't release the source code to make it work, but it will work with Word and Google Docs. So I've already got that installed. So here's my Zotero. I'm in here. I'm going to add a citation. And I've already chosen the document preferences. I think I chose APA. Oh, it's updating my document. Come on, don't take so long. Yeah, that took me forever. Um, there's a couple of reasons why this can take a long time. Um, number one is if you've downloaded Zotero on an OS computer that isn't English, and then you've it will automatically reset itself to the language of your OS. So you might need to change the language from the control panel. And if you do, but your Google Chrome is still in Japanese or your OS is in Japanese, you can get these little conflicts. Let's see if refresh helps that. Let's see. Okay, it's still doing that updating. But tell you what, it works exactly the same way. I'll just jump into Microsoft Word and we'll do it in Microsoft Word instead, right? Uh, what was my, did I copy that? Hold on. Where is, where did we go? Let's copy that again. Here's a couple. Okay, maybe this is going to work. Okay, so let's say, what was it? Rogue State, and it was page 38. Okay. I'll try to update that. Let's see if I can do it in Word instead while well, that's updating. Okay, so if we go on here, why is that not work? I don't know. There's my quote, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I want to do my Zotero reference in here. So again, click on Zotero. I've already installed the connector, add a citation, opens up my Zotero. Uh, Zotero somehow seems to have stuck. Great. Fantastic. Eh? Technology, just when you rely on it, it goes wrong at the very moment you need it. Come on. Why is that stuck? Come on. All right, let's quit and restart Zotero. Yep.
It is opening, but it's kind of stuck. Well, here we go. Okay. Put it in again manually. Okay, so Daryl. Come on. Okay, um, I'm on Word and it's asking me to choose what style, let's just use APA, okay. And here's the control panel. So I select OkeyJelt Workshop, now Rogue State, and there's all my little notes there. And I can see it was on page 38. Okay, stick in 38, okay. Bloom 2002, page 38. And then I go in here and you know I copy in another quote, blah, 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 blah. And then I want to do another citation. Um, let's say it was this one, let's choose something at random. Let's say that was page 56, okay. That was a different book by Bloom 56. And let's do one in here. The citation, let's do the newspaper one. And newspaper didn't have a page number because it was online, so I can leave that blank. Okay. And let's do one in here for the movie. Now, the movie doesn't have page numbers. So let's put in a chapter. And we said it was maybe chapter three, minute seven. Chapter three, minute seven. Now, how about this one? Let's say this reference came from a number of different sources. So we choose multiple sources. So let's put this one, move it across, put in the page number. Let's choose this one, move it across. Let's choose this one, move it across, give it a page number. And let's choose this one, move it across, and give it a page number. Now, maybe this Pearl Harbor was the most important. Okay, let's move it to the top. Maybe Ghost Hunters was second most important. Let's put it second top. Done. And let's put them all in. And we would go on and on and on and on and on and do this. And then we get to the very bottom, and we choose Add Bibliography. And it will go through finding everything you've done, putting them into alphabetical order, and adding them all. Like that. Now, what's really good about this, and this is Word and Google Docs, is if I then go back in and add another one, I don't know, um, Mona Lisa. Okay, let's add to Mona Lisa. Okay, it's not complete, but. Da Vinci, no date, because I never added a date, because I never Googled it. And then it's there. It updates in real time. Now, if it doesn't update for whatever reason, maybe you've lost an internet connection or something, the next time you get it open on an internet connection, you can click refresh and go through adding all those things. Now, let's say you've got it finished, you're totally happy with it, and you're ready to send your Word document off to somebody at JALP to edit it for a publication, and they're going to moan at you because you've used one of these apps to do all of this. Because the editors generally don't like working with things with all the different formatting that comes from the apps. You can then click Unlink Citations, and it will... Don't do that until you're finished. The minute you unlink citations, your document is no longer connected to Zotero and any new things you add would need to be added as a new thing. It won't remember all those previous ones in your Zotero document because you've unlinked them. But if you do want to strip all the Zotero formatting out of the Word document to make it easier for editors, you can do that as well. And again, I don't know why it's stuck, but it should work this way on Google Docs as well, like this. Okay, Rogue State, page 38. Done. 
Pakistan, and there it's there, Bloom 38 in the Google Doc. It will work the same way. It just it kind of stuck for a little moment there. Now, in your document, if you realize you've made a mistake, you can go back to document preferences and change it out of APA, and you know you could put it into Chicago or Harvard or MLA or whatever. And this is what's really cool. Zotero comes with about 15 or 20 of the biggest, most famous referencing styles. Does anybody know how many referencing styles there are in the world? Quick pop quiz question. Does anybody know how many? No. Put your guess in the chat. Quick type in a number how many you think there are. 102, 100. Yeah, what's this? So when we go into manage styles, this will take you to the Zotero page that has a list of every style. Mm -hmm. Get These are about 20 that they have you can add, but then we click additional styles and there's over 10,000. 10,107. Now, admittedly, some of these styles are really obscure. They're used by two guys and a dog in a cave in Mongolia or somewhere. You know, there's some of these have just been made for one journal that nobody reads, but it is a style. So if you go in here, for example, let's say we were doing linguistics. If you click on linguistics, it narrows it down to 34 linguistic styles. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can hover over it and it gives you a preview of what the style looks like. And if you like it, if you then click this journal of linguistics, it will then add it in here. Journal of linguistics is now added to my control panel. So um, that's the, the basic bare bones of what Zotero can do. Now I want to go back to groups because Don asked about the groups. So if we go into groups on your online Zotero and you click create a new group, and you give it a name, you know, what was it? Um, I think it was Curtis referred to this particular conference today as looking like a pirate's crew with the names of people who were coming up. So you could call it whatever you like, you know, the pirate's crew research group or, or whatever. And then you can decide which kind of membership. Public means everybody can see the fruits of your research and your bibliographies you've put together. Public closed membership but people can apply or private. It's just you and a couple of people working and you would then go through, let's say private, and you create the group. Invalid, ah, I forgot to put a name in. Oh, okay, yeah. I this research group, private, create a group. And here we go. So who can read it? Anyone on the internet or only the group members? This dictates who can read the things that you've actually put in here. Um, who can edit it? And you want to make sure that that's set to admins. And then when you add people to the group, you've got two tracks membership, a read-only membership, and an admin who can add and delete things. Two minutes to go. I got it on. Thanks. And then file editing, again, you want to make that only the admins, unless, of course, you want the members to be able to add data and notes, but not delete things, then you could have that group members can do editing, but only the file admin can do deleting of the library rather than the individual book that's in the library. And then we save the settings. And go into members. And, you know, there's only one member. So we can send our invitations to people. And when they accept, we click update roles. And in this place, you can change them to being owners or admins or, or whatever. And then in your Zotero, underneath all your normal folders, you'll have your group folders at the bottom. And I think we're kind of almost out of time. But I think that's probably okay because you guys could have asked questions all the way through, but we've maybe got one or two minutes left if anybody's got any last questions for any of this.
Ah, uh, hold on. Norman, uh, Rab, I have PDF research articles on my desktop without proper titles. Yeah, that's the big problem with PDFs because they end up with file number one dot PDF. So the easiest way, and, and it's not easy, unfortunately, is if you open the PDF and see what the actual title is and then do a search for the title in Google Scholar, you can then import it. But that would need to be done one by one by one by one. Um, it's possible there's a way of doing that if you go into download and we go to plugins it might well be that someone's made a plugin for importing pdfs that can grab the metadata i'm not sure if someone's made one or not because usually whenever i download a pdf i actually put the name in the file name to kind of make it a bit easier but Maybe someone's made a plug-in for that. I'm not sure. Any more questions? Yeah, Madoka's telling me she's kicking me out. <laughs> so um, no. I'll be around the rest of the day, you know, in the chill-out room if anybody's got any other questions. And um, my email, I'm fairly easy to find. It's just rab.patterson at gmail.com. You can find me fairly easily or send me an email if you've got a question. So I think that's it. We are about done. Thank you, Rab. Excellent. Good. Let me stop sharing the screen. Thank you so much. And let me stop the recording.